everybody. Welcome to the Fun Alignment Show. And we are talking today about power. And I have a ton of stuff that I want to share with you about, about power in the chart. <laughs> so, so I want to invite you today into an exploration of the energy and the archetype of power. I think that sometimes when we go out and we experience the world, we feel sometimes powerless to make a difference. We feel powerless over people who maybe have different thoughts or ideas than us. We feel powerless sometimes to make a difference in maybe a reality that doesn't match up what we're really hoping to experience in the world. So we're not going to get to the end total end goal of this presentation, but the end goal of this presentation for me, for you, is to support you in dropping into a deeper experience of the following phrase. And you can just listen, or if you want to, you can read this along with me. I am a perfect expression of the divine. I am a powerful, unlimited creator. I am fully supported in the complete experience for the fulfillment of my life and soul purpose. Being supported is my birthright and my natural state. It's through the path of surrender, compassion, and service to the cosmic plan, the divine path, and divine timing that I'm always in the right place at the right time with the right people making the right choices to fulfill my destiny and the energy of Source God working through me to serve the world. I am always sufficiently provided for, and I am grateful. I use all that I am to fully activate all that I am. I fully express my mastery, my heart, my authentic self, my unique place of service and joy. I receive because I know I am, I am a precious child of the divine. I receive because I know that what surrender is the path to power and service. And we'll talk about that today. I allow all the good that it is my birthright. I create purely for the sake of expressing the source of love that I am. I trust. I use the blessings of my infinite abundance to increase the abundance of others. I am love and loved, and I'm infinite abundance in action. Maybe for some of us that doesn't sound like power, but when we come from that place of that alignment of that electrical field of source that rolls through you, and we see this, by the way, in the human design chart, you are powered not only by the neutrino stream, meaning stardust or sun, the energy of the sun that lands upon your crown, it's through understanding the nature of strategy and power in the chart and the ability to let go in order to tap into greater power, not less for power, and to release your own personal will and effort that you can tap into higher levels of power that are part of your design. But to get there, we have to explore some of the nature of the hardwiring of what's in your chart. When I talk about empowerment, and this is actually one of the resiliency keys that I use in the quantum alignment system, I'm talking about your capacity to activate the full potential of your power, your personal power in the way that's right for you, and your ability to feel that you have Control, maybe not necessarily over what happens to you, because you might not have complete control over what happens to you, but you do have control over what you choose to do, what, what shows up in your life. When we look at the energy of empowerment and where it sits in the chart, what we are looking at primarily is how to work best with the four motors in the chart. Empowerment is oftentimes associated in some way, shape, or form with the energy of the will center, the sacral center, the emotional solar plexus, and the root center. And I'm going to go through those one by one in just a moment. If you are not feeling powerful in your life, you will find that it impacts your stomach, the heart, the gallbladder, the thymus, your ovaries testes, kidney, prostate, pancreas, the solar plexus neuron network, the nervous system, and the lungs. These are all physical parts of the body that are associated with the energy centers associated with power. So 
sometimes when we are using human design as an assessment tool for what's the energetic slash spiritual root cause of your pain, we go backwards and we look at what's going on in your body, what center is that associated with, and ultimately what theme is that associated with, and is there some way that we can bring out a higher expression of that theme in your life? emotionally, if you are struggling with feeling powerful in your life, you might find that you struggle with anger, depression, unforgiveness, hopelessness, despair, or bitterness. You might find that you say to yourself a lot, I feel powerless to create what I want in my life. I overuse my power because I sometimes feel powerless. Sometimes we overcompensate for feeling powerful by I, I call this, you, you cop a, 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 an attitude of swagger, right? I resist success. Sometimes we resist success because we're afraid to be powerful. We're afraid of our power because we don't feel like we have the ability to harness it correctly and use it powerfully. If you look at the spiritual symptoms of feeling disempowered in your life, you might feel victimized by a reality over which you feel like you don't have any control or that you are fated, or you feel fated or doomed. So just for fun, not really fun necessarily, but I do want to just explore for yourself, just for a minute, I want to just give you 30 seconds to just tune into, if you are a generator, the following question, and when we feel your sacral response to this question. Do you feel like you have power or control over your life? Or my manifestors, projectors, and reflectors, because when you have an undefined sacral, as all of you will, you don't want to ask people with an undefined sacral questions, because as soon as you do, you cause them to drop back into the conditioned sacral response. And you're not generators, you're who you are. So I'm going to propose the same question to you, but I'm going to do it rather as, rather than as a question. I'm just going to leave it as an open ended statement. And I want you just to explore for yourselves what comes up in response to this. I'm wondering if you feel powerless over your life. And I, I really encourage you all, take, just take a quick minute to write a couple, of, not even a minute, just write a couple of things down. Where are you at with power? Do you feel power, powerful? What I really want to invite you to do is Deepen on a personal level this weekend after the show's over and you're just integrating, you know, give yourself the gift this weekend of really asking yourself what needs to be healed, released, aligned, and brought to your awareness for you to feel powerful. You don't have to answer that. I, I, actually, I don't even want you to get up into your mind and try to figure that out. I just really want to invite you to ask this question, play with this question. And either journal with it or take it on a contemplative walk or take it on, take this question with you into meditation and just explore what might come up for you as you think about this. This is a really important question for you to ask yourself because where you come from, the thoughts, the ideas, the beliefs you have around power are going to be influencing what you create around activating your own personal power. So let's go back to talking about this in the context of human design. There are four motors in the human design chart. Now, the thing that's so interesting about these four motors is that they function very differently. And sometimes they don't function in sync if you have them all colored in. So when we're talking about these motors, we're going to look at the difference. I'm going to go through each motor one by one. We're going to look at the purpose of the motor. Most importantly, the way the motor functions and how is that going to impact you if you have this defined or open? Because I want you to get a good sense of your innate natural power style. Notice that I said your innate natural power style, and I said it that way on purpose because there isn't a single one of you out there that isn't designed to be powerful. Every single one of us is designed to be powerful. In fact, we are designed to be powerful. It's such an important aspect of who we are that we have two distinctly different developmental cycles that we go through as children that has the purpose of teaching us how to explore power. Two-year-olds, two to five, six, four, five, they are exploring power, right? That's why two-year-olds say that famous word that we all hate as parents, right? No, right? 
And 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds, young adolescent children go through a second phase where they're exploring power. And that's why they get into power struggles with us when we're parents, because they're learning for themselves. What is my power? Where is my power? How do I properly express my power? It is important that you feel powerful. It's so important that it's one of the energies on the G center. The 731 is all about empowerment. How powerful do you feel in providing or being part of creating the direction for your own life? So you are all powerful. It's just about learning how to tap into it in the way that's right for you. So the first center that we're going to look at, and I'm, I'm going through and I'm ranking them by order of strength. The most powerful motor in the body is called the sacral center. The sacral center is the center for workforce and a life force energy. It is the only energy center of all the four motors that is sustainable and consistent. It's like the ever ready bunny. It just keeps going and going and going and going. This energy, if you are a generator, you'll have access to it consistently. If you are a manifestor, projector, and reflector, your power is going to be in temporarily borrowing this energy from people. This is how you know others. This is how you know the worker bees of the world. This is how you know life force. You are designed to tap into this power, but not to sustain it. In fact, you can't sustain it. If you are a manifestor, projector, or reflector, and you are working as if you are a generator type, if you are going and going and going and going and going and going and going without a break, then you are going to run the risk of burning yourself out, of not using the flow of this energy correctly for yourself and frying your own circuits. Now, one other piece I just want to throw in here about this sacral motor, especially when it's defined. If you think about the generator types, manifesting generators and generators, the strategy for those two types is basically to respond. You have to wait and see what shows up. And then you respond. You don't get to access this power just because you want to. Okay? In fact, I'm going to show you as we continue to go through all this stuff in the chart, there's nothing in this chart. And next week, we're going to talk about the, the, the channels of power and the channels of surrender in this chart. Okay, we're only looking at centers this week. There is nothing in this chart that says, I exert my will and I get to take my will and override everything else and work from the direction of my mind and put it into action, no matter what your type, even if you're a manifester. Everything about the chart and the power in the chart is to a certain degree, I'm going to say this word and I don't mean this in the context of strategy, it is to a certain degree responsive. You are always dancing with the cosmos. You're always dancing with your outer reality regardless of your type. And when you are working from that place, everything that you need to do to activate the full potential of your energy comes from listening, being aware being present to what's showing up, not pushing, not overriding what is, okay? Because that's the fastest route to burning out or not tapping into the full potential of your power. The second center, the emotional solar plexus, is the second most powerful motor in the body. It is the most creative energy in the body. And this is the place where we, uh, you know, we hold a lot of the traditional energies that we associate with creativity, art and music and romance and poetry, all of that's down here. This is also the energy for right relationships and our relationship with source and our imagination and our community. All of that is located in this center. When we think of this center as a power center, the real thing to understand is that the power of the defined emotional solar plexus, that's half of you, is activated when things feel correct and aligned. Okay. You can't just go do something and when you have this energy defined in your chart. You have to wait for the emotional sensing alignment. So things have to feel right. And for things to feel right or for you to not do something, that's also sometimes that feels right, you have to wait over the course of that emotional wave until you get proper alignment with whatever it is that you're trying to do. The thing that I think is so beautiful about this particular center in particular is that when the emotional alignment is there and we can maintain and sustain emotional alignment by using our thoughts, okay? You think good and happy thoughts, okay? You think empowered, positive, imaginative, creative thoughts, it stimulates your emotional solar plexus. It creates a frequency of energy. That frequency of energy in turn calibrates your heart center 
which in turn influences what you attract and what you notice as opportunities in your reality. You can consciously harness that power. And when you harness that power and you stay strong in making sure that you are working deliberately with sustaining a specific emotional quality of energy, because you're calibrating your heart center and you're really sort of allowing whatever is is vibrationally matching your emotional energy to show up in your life, you're using that as your innate creative power. And that's true for you, whether you have a defined solar plexus or an open solar plexus. Now, I want to add one last little piece. If you have an open solar plexus, there is a tendency sometimes to give up your power because you tend to be empathic and you can feel other people's feelings and you give up what you want and need in response to other people because you just want everybody to be happy and the emotional energy to be even and smooth and you just you don't want to make a wave. So you give up your own power. So really important if you have an open solar plexus to be prepared to stand in your truth and know that it might be emotionally dodgy for you. Some people might not like it when you say, hey, I don't want to do this or hey, I don't want you to do this. They don't always get excited when you tell them no. And nonetheless, for you to stand in your power, you have to hold that place of what's true and right and correct for you. The third most powerful motor is the will center. The will center is responsible for creating the energy of of transforming experiences and things that are painful, things that that are needing transformation into something of value. Most importantly, this is the center that is responsible for the work energy that turns value into the material form. This is the place where money pretty much lives in the chart and the material, the value of the material world lives. This is also the place where we have ego and it's the place where when we surrender our personal self, we have the opportunity to serve something bigger than who we are individually. Next week, when I talk about the channels, I'll talk about how for us to fully tap into the power of the will center, we literally have to die to the to the ego and emerge as a servant to the higher self or our more authentic self or the cosmic plan, if you will. The will center in terms of power is a, an energy center just like the solar plexus that fluctuates in the quality of energy that you can draw on. Now, if you have a defined will center, You absolutely, to stay in your power, you absolutely have to take cycles of rest. It's built into our hardwiring as humans that we have cycles of rest and that it's in that resting cycle that we regain and restore and restock and replenish and re-nourish our power. That is true if you have a defined will center or an open will center. Everyone needs cycles of rest. The defined will center, though, because it has consistent access to willpower energy, can push through the need to rest. You can use your willpower, dig deep and go, I'm not tired. I'm going to keep going. But you can only do that for a finite period of time. And then you run the risk, actually, of running your power and your energy into the ground and burning yourself out. So another place where, again, the energy fluctuates. The only energy center so far that we've talked about that stays steady and true is the sacral. The will center fluctuates, solar plexus fluctuates, and so does the root center. The root center is a center for adrenaline energy. And if you look at all of the channels surrounding the root center and where they connect, they either connect to the spleen, to the sacral, or to the solar plexus. Those three centers, the spleen, which is the triangle on the left, the sacral, which is the square in the middle, and the solar plexus, which is the triangle on the right, are all centers that to a certain degree are dependent on right timing. The root center gives us the power, the drive to lay the foundation, take the actions necessary to build up to whatever it is we want to do, whatever power we want to activate in at, by action or with action. But we can't fully implement that power until the timing is right. And the one thing we're not in charge of, no matter how much we wish we were, is timing. You're not in charge of timing. There is a timing piece that is intricately linked into the translation of holding a quantum opportunity or a a possibility in your life and translating into the tangible material opportunities and experiences 
Sometimes the bottom line is it takes time. You have an intention, you have a desire, you want to build something. You got to wait for right timing. And if you're trying to override right time, if you're pushing with adrenaline energy against right timing, you are going to burn yourself out. The root center has pulses. It operates in pulses. And when it's pulsing, when it's giving you that adrenaline surge, and then that adrenaline surge says, okay, now go, then everything syncs up, synchronicity happens, and the timing is right, and you can take that action and bring it to fulfillment. If the timing is not there, sometimes we really can't tap into that adrenaline energy. It's just, it doesn't happen. And you might really question yourself and go, why am I procrastinating? Or why is my mojo not here? Sometimes when we procrastinate, it's not because you're screwed up or you're stuck or you're, you're lazy or all the things that we talk about. Sometimes when we think about not taking action. Sometimes what's happening is your inner being is so intuitive that procrastination is just the manifestation of your intuition. You know, there's something in you that knows but it's not the right time. And you're trying to get your head to tell the, your root center to push against it and you just can't. When we align with right timing, meaning when you have faith, if you go back to that first statement that I read, if you trust in the sufficiency of the universe and you know I'm going to be fully supported in the full expression of who I am and what I'm here to do, and I trust that. Now, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I trust it. And you align with that so deeply, you'll have the energy when the timing is right to do whatever it is you need to do and activate your full power. The next center that we want to look at, again, when you are talking about uh, energies, is the throat center. And the reason why I want to just explore the throat center in the context of power is because what gets connected to your throat is going to tell us a lot about your power style. Okay, what gets connected to the throat tells us a lot about your power style. So we're going to, I want you to just take a second, if you have your chart in front of you, just look at your chart, and if you've got any channels connected to your throat, just take your finger and follow the channel down and see what center is it connected to. Is it connected to a motor? And is it not connected to a motor? Here's a hint. <laughs> If you, your, your throat center is part of what defines human design types, manifestors will have an open sacral, meaning your sacral will be white, but they will also, in conjunction with that, have a motor connected to the throat. So either the root center or the emotional solar plexus or the will center or all three or two, any combination thereof, will be connected to the throat center. The sacral is always open. The manifesting generator will have a defined sacral and they will have a motor connected to the throat. And that motor can sometimes be just the, the sacral. I have three open motors, but my sacral is connected to my throat. The generator will have a defined sacral and no motor to the throat. The projector will have an open sacral and no motor to the throat. And a reflector always has a completely open chart. The reason why this is important is because your type is also indicative of your power style, okay? Your power style is going to be ultimately your human design strategy. So manifestors are here to tune into that inner creative flow. They're tuning into basically the will center, the solar plexus, or the root, whichever ones they have defined in their chart. They're in line, in the, feeling the flow of whatever the energy cycle is for each one of those three centers. And remember, they all function in a wave-like pattern, right? The will center works to rest. The solar plexus has waves. The root center has pulses on and off. For the manifester, they have to sync up with that energy activation that comes when the timing is right with those either one of those three motors. For the manifesting generator and for the generator both, the power style is about responding. And the truth is, for the manifesting generator, if they're not responding to multiple opportunities simultaneously, they're oftentimes pushing their power down, and they are hurting, they actually will hurt your thyroid. So if you're not standing in your power as a manifesting generator, and that power being your ability to multitask and move quickly, at least in the front end of your responding, you will actually decrease your power. For the generator, 
if you're respond, if you're not responding, again, you're pushing energy down. If the manifester, by the way, isn't informing or isn't tapping into their creative flow, they'll also hurt their thyroid. Everybody hurts their thyroid. That's in the throat center. The throat center, if you don't use this energy correctly, will fry the thyroid. And what happens is when you fry the thyroid, you crash the entire endocrine system, and then you get massive burnout. So to be powerful, you also have to keep your body healthy and active and empowered. And to do that means you have to use your throat center or your strategy by type correctly. So manifestors need to follow their inner creative flow and act when their own inner timing indicates it's right for them and inform before they act. Manifesting generators have to respond and sometimes they will respond to multiple things and they won't always finish everything that they respond to and they can't push that down. Generators will respond if they're trying to create with their heads and override that waiting that comes with responding. They will fry their thyroids and shut down their power. Projectors have to wait for the invitation and the recognition. That's the initiation of the power that puts them in the right place at the right time, fully activating their purpose. And reflectors have to wait the full 28 cycle day cycle of the moon. But here's the thing that I really want to explore with you because this is very empowering. Okay. Power is not really about having access to energy in the chart. Okay. As I said before, all types are equally powerful. You are all extremely powerful. The key components of real power are, and let's talk about this for a second. I'm going to back this up for a second. I'm going to go through what I'm going to call the key po components of real power. And I'm going to show you how, yes, it's part of your human design. Your human design is the interface that allows you to tap into this power. It's the, the bridge between your energy and your consciousness and the frequency of energy you hold and your outer reality, the physical reality that shows up. If you want to gain more control over your reality, if you want to have a greater access to power, you have to start first with knowing exactly how the creative process works. So let's review this. I know I've done this a lot this year in, on the Quantum Alignment Show, but I feel like this is probably the most important information that I want everybody on the planet to get right now. I'm going to go through the basic process of how we create out of the quantum field. So we're going to do very simple, basic quantum. It's not actually technically quantum mechanics. It's actually just a little bit of quantum physics. Quantum physicists, we cringe if we call this quantum mechanics. This is something completely different. But let's talk about the components of the creative process. The first part of the creative process is what's called the quantum field. This is the unmanifest reality. This is the field of possibility, pure possibility, where every possible expression of who you are exists just not in form yet. So that future you that's out there that you're creating right now that has a really super juicy, fulfilling, satisfying, joyful life. Hopefully you always have that in this current reality right now. But that future expanded you already exists out there in the quantum field. You just haven't collapsed it or manifested as a possibility yet. The second component of the creative process is called the mental or, and the emotional bodies. This is the place in your energy field where you store your conditioning. This is where you carry all of your epigenetic and your genetic code. So all of your gene code is stored here. This is where you store all the energy of all your past experiences, your memories, things that have happened to you, your emotional memories. All of that's stored in this particular level of the energy field. The next component that you use when you create is your subtle body. The subtle body is the template, the energy blueprint for either what you're about to create in your physical world. So some of you, if you're really super, you are all very super intuitive, but some of you may be more aware of your intuition and you start to sense, oh, something's about to change in my life, maybe. Or you might just start to feel like, oh, I'm about to meet someone. Part of what's happening is the energy of that experience is starting to vibrate in your subtle body template. And you're beginning to sense, oh, it's about to come true. Sometimes, too, if you've had a physical experience, maybe you've had a cold or an illness, once you start to heal from that cold, the vibration of that experience, that illness starts to leave your field. And if you're seeing a, an acupuncturist or a quantum healer or anybody who does energy medicine, uh, 
you know, or does some kind of energy healing, they're working oftentimes on this level of your body, the aura, the subtle body template. The last but not most, not last but not least part of the creative process is your manifest reality. What's in your life right now is a key component of how you create and what you're creating. If you look at your life right now, everything that you see, hear, smell, touch, and taste is an expression of your consciousness. And it's showing you what you, what, where you are with your thoughts, where you are with your creativity, showing you what you like. And if something else is shown, it'll show you what you don't like. And it'll show you where perhaps you want to grow. So we look at our physical reality. We're always dancing with it. And if you love what's going on in your life, you get to ask for more of it and create more of it. And if you don't like it, then you start creating something different because this is an experiential way of doing consciousness. If you want to look at this a little bit differently, there is this quantum field of infinite possibilities that includes all the possible permutations of the expression of who you are and then your life right now. In between, there's a filter, and that filter contains, most importantly, your human design and your conditioning. Just a different way of looking at that, this, just to show it differently, your physical body, your subtle body, your mental, emotional body, and your quantum field. The thing that I really want you to get from this particular image is that you have an aura. Okay, there is an energy field around you. And that energy field, scientists now know that that energy field can actually stretch all the way across the globe and it can connect with other people, even on the phone. It's a very powerful field of information through which you are creating, or it's a filter basically through which you are experiencing the unlimited potential of the quantum field. And you want to have a filter there, by the way, because um, filters keep you from being overwhelmed by the infinite nature of what you could potentially be creating because you don't want it to be unlimited. It would be overwhelming if it was unlimited. So what we say, oftentimes I create my own reality. You really want to know who, what's, what's in your reality. You have to know who you are. You are the space, not the form. The space is consciousness and consciousness is the rocket fuel. Okay, it's the it's the what jettisons between your experience in the physical and what you pluck out of the quantum field as a new potential experience in your physical reality. When quantum physicists look at quantum particles, what they know is that quantum particles, which are the building blocks of matter, the building blocks of all of your life experiences, are built out of quantum particles. Those quantum particles either travel in movement or they are measured in location. In fact, quantum scientists can only measure movement or location, but never both at the same time. So the thing that's really important to understand is that because movement is potential, that quantum field is this movement of energy, this movement of quantum particles that is constantly in motion. Location, when we measure the location of a quantum particle, location is manifestation. If we look at what determines of all those infinite potentials of who you are out in the quantum field, what determines which one of those we make manifest, it's the meaning that we have about ideas, thoughts, experiences, concepts, and archetypes that determine what we make manifest and actually causes a moving potential in the quantum field to actually stop moving and drop into a low located place or a physical, tangible, manifested experience. The meanings you have are determined by your conditioning field. And if you want to create a different state of well-being and power in your life, you have to change the meanings you have. Well, what does that mean? That means your perception of the world determines what you create. So I want you to just take a minute right now. This goes back a little bit to what we were looking at at the very beginning. And think of the word power. Just think about the word power and free flow. Just take your pen for a second and just write down everything that comes to mind when you think of power. As you are thinking about the word power, what you're doing right now is you're actually activating a photon storm, a storm of light in your brain. That storm of light triggers your brain to create a neurotransmitters, biochemicals, that actually stimulate in your body an emotional response. 
So maybe some of you are thinking about, oh, I feel so powerful over my reality. I'm so grateful to have tapped into such an awesome state of power. And you're creating this powerful, happy, joyful, excited, proud feeling around power. Maybe some of you, if you're like my husband, you're thinking about the news and looking at politics and the idea of power maybe has a different energetic component to it for you. Maybe you're feeling powerless over what's going on in the world, or maybe you're feeling like your voice doesn't matter. That's possible. Some of us are feeling that way. So that if you're having those kinds of thoughts around power, you're stimulating for yourself an emotional response that matches those thoughts. Those thoughts and those emotional response in turn calibrates your heart and you have a magnet in your heart called the magnetic monopole. When you calibrate that magnet, it actually begins to draw into your experience things that match the frequency of energy that you are holding. So if you feel powerful, you're going to attract into your life more opportunities to amplify and experience a greater degree of power. If you are fearing powerless in your life, you're going to pull into your experience opportunities to face that powerless inner powerlessness in your physical reality. You always have the opportunity to change your mind and to change your story and to change your perspective so that you can change the, the experiences that you create in your reality. You have to understand if you're going to tap into your true creative power, you have to understand what inspires the movement of those photons, those ideas you got in your brain in the very beginning when I said the word power in the first place. And part of what influences our understanding of the world and our understanding of key ideas and concepts, the meanings we give key, key ideas, concepts, and archetypes is going to be in part and parcel our human design. The single most vital thing that you need to do to fully activate that power that each and every one of you carry is to surrender. You've got to let go of all of this stuff in your head that is telling you that you have to take action as part of power. What we see in the chart over and over again is that when we drop into a place of trust, and consequently, because we trust the cosmic plan, well, because we trust, Ra used to call it the program, because we trust the program, we trust the infinite source, the, the infinite flow of sustainability and abundance through us, we can afford then to let go and to know in the heart of our being that we are valuable enough and important enough and a vital part of the cosmic plan, we are such an important part of that cosmic plan that if we let go, instead of pushing, when we trust in the timing, when we hold true to our value, which I cannot stress that enough, that the most important aspect to activating greater and greater opportunities for yourself is for you to stand in your own value. When you can do that, then you can let go of trying to figure it all out. Let go of constantly trying to take that next step that you think your brain thinks you need to do. And you can let yourself follow your strategy according to your type and fully activate your power. So some tips here for how to surrender. And we're going to talk a lot more next week about surrender. We'll look at pathways of surrender in the chart. You want to follow your strategy by type. As I said, this is so important, especially for my projectors and my reflectors. Any of you who have really longer cycles of waiting as part of your strategy, it's really easy in the way our world works right now. If things aren't happening fast for you to start questioning yourself, what's wrong with me? How come this isn't working for me? Uh, you know, when we have, when it's not happening at the speed that the society or our collective conditioning tells us it should be happening, we start to question our value. You have to take care of your sense of value as part of activating your power. Because when you can own your value, when you can say, okay, I claim my unique role in the puzzle of humanity, in the cosmic plan, and you stand in that role and you ultimately defend that role, then you activate a giant quality of power that supports you in letting go and letting the right circumstances show up. 
You also have to like it or not to become more powerful. You've got to build a trusting relationship with source or God or the universe or whatever you feel comfortable calling it. But if you can't trust, it's very difficult for you to create beyond what you think you can do by yourself with your own physical will. You have to cultivate a set of meanings that support your power. If you didn't like your definitions of the word power when we played with those and Again, go explore these these definitions more deeply over the weekend. Really integrate and think about, um, you know, what does power mean to you? If you think about power and you think about all those times when you didn't feel powerful and you think about all those places in your life where you feel powerless or you think about how there's no possible way you can exert any kind of power over your life, if that's what's going on in your consciousness, those, that's a set of meanings that's not supporting you in becoming more powerful in your life. So you've got to really define power in a way that feels right for you. And then, and this is key, then you have to let your aura do the talking. There is, as I said, when we looked at the components of, of creativity, that subtle body template, your aura, your energy field, radiates the frequency of power that you hold based on the meanings that you have about your own personal power. And your energy field is going to communicate to others, to the world around you, what you're willing to allow into your experiences and what, you know, what opportunities that match your understanding of power are you open to creating or having or manifesting or collapsing as quantum potentials into your life. Here's a piece I just want to end with. What would your life look like? I invite you to, again, just to explore this over the weekend. It's a little bit different than what I normally do, so I'm giving you homework. What would your life look like if you fully expressed and aligned with your innate creative power? Thank you all so much for joining me. Have a great weekend. Bye.